family and friends this morning as we stand and begin to worship the good Father God. He's so faithful and so good. Glory to God. Father, we lift our voices to you this morning. We worship you, Lord.
the Lord. Is he taking you somewhere? He said he'd get you there. Amen. He'll bring you right on up, get you where you're supposed to be. Glory to God. Oh, he's so good to us. Praise the Lord. Are you excited to be in church? It's a good, good day. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, turn around, smile at somebody. Tell them it's going to be a good day. And then you may be seated. Good morning. Everybody's awake, glory to God. How is everybody this morning? Glory to God. Well, do we have anybody here for the very first time here in Sarasota or in Brants? And if you want to stand, give us a wave. We want to greet you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. We are so happy to have you guys. And welcome everybody joining us out there on the internet. It's going to be good. Amen? All right. Who knows what happens tomorrow? Greater faith. Greater faith. Amen. Yes. So it'll be starting tomorrow, all this next week. It's going to start at 7 p.m. So a little earlier than our normal night services. Just remember, 6 p.m. there in Branson. It's going to be streamed live on the internet. Um, but if you're supposed to be here, you still got time. You can join us there or here in person. We'll have kids classes ages up to 12. And if you need any hotel information, if you're still trying to come, we've got it up on our website. So how many of you guys are already here for the conference? Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then also, right around the corner, we've got our Vision Sunday. Yes, amen. That's going to be Sunday, February 18th. And so we've got instructions at our information counter. We've got them on our website. So if you need to look that up and what it is, you can find out more about it there or ask at the info counter. The ladies will be happy to help you. And then Branson, real quick announcement for you. We will not be having Faith for Life classes the next three Sundays. So that includes today, um, the 11th and the 18th. So just remember that. So we won't have those. All right, so that's it for my announcements. Did we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? If you want to stand up. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How many? I can't see it, guys. Seven. Happy anniversary. 31 behind you. Happy anniversary, you guys. Happy birthday, Miss Nancy. Make sure, happy birthday. Make sure I got everybody. All right, well, let's see Branson. Good morning. There's a birthday I see popping up. Happy birthday. Saw at least one. Oh, they're pointing, so I'm sure there's another birthday. Oh, yep. Happy birthday. Well, happy birthday and happy anniversary to everybody out there online as well. All right, who's ready for some testimonies? All right, well, this one comes from Arkansas. It says, I'm a kindergarten teacher. In the natural, this year's students have been the most challenging group that I have ever taught. I've questioned many times why I'm there. However, I know I'm supposed to be there, and the Lord showed me to start quoting Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 and to put my armor on daily. A couple months ago, I was informed that I had been selected by the school superintendent to be one out of five mentor lead teachers out of around 215 teachers in the whole district. Well, glory to God. This job would allow me to mentor new or struggling student teachers, sorry, teachers in their classrooms. What an honor and what a way to spread the good news. God is so faithful. 
This year has really stretched my spiritual muscles and my natural mind, but now I know why. How can we ever grow and be promoted without being stretched? Therefore, we have the ability to help others in need. Glory to God. She not only has impact on her students, now many others through those teachers she's going to mentor. Glory to God. This one says, it's from Alabama. I wanted to report that I am cancer-free after being diagnosed almost 10 years ago with stage 4 colon cancer. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your, con thank you for your continued prayers, and to God be the glory. And this one is from Indiana. It said, my aunt had an autoimmune disease that was destroying the tissues in her fingers and toes. She thought she was going to lose part of a couple fingers that had turned black. We prayed as a family and, and about it. We prayed as a family about it. And now, almost a year later, her fingers and toes are completely restored. <laughs> Glory to God. You can't even tell anything was ever wrong with them. And this one's about faith school, and it's from Washington. It says, Glory to God. I was going through faith school this morning and got my victory I had asked prayer for. In class, Brother Moore was talking about Jesus speaking to the wind and waves, and then we acted on it for this mind and soul. When we acted on it for the soul, I felt something loose, like a strip in my body. Suddenly, I could breathe clearly. I had been recovering from sickness symptoms with the lungs being one of the last things I was standing for. And I know we don't go by, go by what we feel, but when we spoke to organs at the end of the class, I felt my gut area ripple and expand out three times. I had issues I was standing against in this area too. And that peace I was believing for, I had asked for prayer because of anxiety and feeling pushed since the start of the year. It is all gone. Every single feeling of it, I feel so much, I feel light and so much better. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Let's just stand up and praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. You are such a good God. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you, Father. Nothing is too hard or too difficult for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Do you enjoy those testimonies? Yes. You know, those testimonies not only encourage us, but they give us hope. You know, faith is the substance of things. What? Hope for. Let's say this like we quite often do. Father, Father what you have done for others, you are doing for me. And greater things than these shall we see. All the glory, all the glory be to our great God. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. You know what you just said? Greater things than these. There were some awesome testimonies there. But we're going to see greater. Amen? Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 as we worship the Lord with our giving. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8 from the Amplified Classic. The Amplified Classic. You're probably familiar with this scripture. Notice Paul says, Remember this. He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. He who sows generously, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generously with blessings. Notice that first word, remember. I think that's got two applications as I was meditating on that this morning. The first one, I think, what Paul was doing is putting them in remembrance. Now, when you give, remember there's a harvest to be coming back. Because notice what he says. He who sorrow, sows generously. Now, notice, why are you sowing? That blessings may come to someone else. And because of that, he's saying, you'll also reap generously. Now, there's another application we'll look at in just a few moments. Let's go to verse 7. Let each one give as he is made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is willing to abandon, not willing, to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it, giver whose heart is in his giving. Now notice, two different purpose or places we see. First, he says, as he has made up his mind, as you make up your mind. But notice he adds to this, and purposes in his heart. If you're purposing in his heart, you're also communing with God. So you're deciding what to get, but he's involved in that. But then also notice some other things in here. Notice he's unwilling to abandon a giver. He will not forget it. He will remember it. And then also it says, notice, 
His heart is in his giving. It's a heart decision. Now let's take a look at verse uh, 8. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no way to support and furnish in abundance for every good work. That word remember, remember in that first verse we looked at, I think the second application of this, these individuals were tithers. They knew about tithing before they were born again because they knew the Old Testament. They knew what the law was, or before the law, really. I think he's trying to put them in remember, so I'll remember something else. There's a grace for giving. You receive grace to get saved. But there's also a grace for giving. So remember that. Notice what the grace for giving does. It gives you abundance that you'll be self-sufficient. And it's as we grow in this grace, as we learn this grace, we'll begin to prosper in a greater way. Not only will I have our needs met, ultimately we'll have enough for every good work with an abundance left over. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, we're going to go over the projects just for a minute. Let's take a look at the uh, ghost supply, the outreaches. 86 to 1, the money's coming in, and we continue to need supply because there are a lot of trainings been done, but we're getting ready for the next part. Let's take a look at word supply. 2.42 to 1. Notice, we haven't even spent 1% of the reserves, and that's because of people that are word senders. Amen? Glory to God. The word is going out, and you have a great part in that with a great harvest of that. And let's take a look at the Step Up Project, which is the Falcon 7X. Because we've had 6,385 come in, we've got a balance of 3,614, so almost 64%. And we call that in, right? And we also call in the right plane for this ministry that God has for us. Well, if you need an offering envelope, ushers are in the aisle. If you're giving by cash or credit card, you can get an envelope. If you're getting by check, you can make out FLC, Faith Life Church. If you're giving by text, it's up online. They're passing them down to you. It's coming. Glory to God. God is good, isn't he? We're going to have a great meeting. Things are great. Everything's set up. We're ready to go. You're ready. And we've even got people coming in early. So looks like everybody's probably ready. You can go ahead and stand up. B, will you bring our offering? Thank you, Father. Say this with me, Heavenly Father, Father, we do remember. We We know, Father, Father, it's your will that we prosper. prosper. And Father, we thank you you that we have the right heart, heart. that when we give, Father, Father, we're giving in faith, we're giving in love, love. we're blessing others, others. knowing, Father, Father, the blessing will come back to us. So, Father, we thank you that we are blessed, our children are blessed, our ministries are blessed, and we give you honor and glory for it in Jesus' name. What's going on in Faith Life family? We're getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipments. They're coming in. What's next? All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated because extra is coming in. Amen? And then finally, God is bringing into our hands seed, even some great, big, whopper, chunk seed. And we've seen that when we sow, we're going to receive. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Ushers, serve the people.
You got anybody got any victory in there this morning? Oh, man. You know, we, we are the most victorious people. When we win, we get to go on and win more. Right? We don't, we don't just win. We, we just keep on winning. Glory to God. Do you know you're going someplace to win today? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a victory waiting to happen in somebody's life today. Glory to God. I'm about to get excited up in here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray over the rest of the service. Father God, we do. We come to you and we're asking for your help, Lord, for your, for your will, for your way, for your plan. Lord, we ask that in Jesus' name, everything that you desire would come to pass in this service, that, that your word would go forth and help and give answers and, and to questions and, and deliverance and healing, Lord, that, that good things would begin to happen in the hearts of people everywhere, Lord, here and in Branson, all on the internet, Lord, that as your word goes forth, we be good hearers and doers of everything that we would hear today. We purpose by faith to hear and do your good word. And we ask and we give you praise for every good thing that will be accomplished in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. You may be seated. Whew. Lights went out there for a minute. Uh-huh. Thought they were canceling the show, but we got the victory. Can't just cancel our show. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many are excited about next week? It is going to be amazing. Amazing it's going to be. God's going to help us. And you know, the, the one thing that I know uh, these past, I don't know, I'd say four or five weeks, but it's been more than that, probably three or four months or better, the church has been preparing yes. for this meeting. Yes. Amen? Yes. Preparing, I know that we've built things, we've cleaned things, we've added things. We, there's stuff. There's stuff that getting ready for this meeting. Glory to God. And in preparing for these things, you know, I, I see people buzzing around like bees everywhere. Man, cleaning the seats. If we see a spot here, making it the most excellent it can be. And you know, that preparation, preparing is the key to receiving. Amen. How you prepare is how you'll receive. Amen. I remember, we'll give you a flooring store analogy. <laughs> We used to tell people, we gave, we gave out, when we sold a, a, just say a room full of carpet, we'd give them a pamphlet. Mm -hmm. And it told them everything they needed to do to prepare for us to come to their floor. Right? And sometimes you'd get there and it was prepared. Right. You know? Sometimes they'd have their furniture moved out, they'd have their carpet up, they'd, they'd have all the stuff off the floor. But other times you'd go in and they ain't done nothing. They ain't done nothing. And there you go. But, but you know, you'd go in and, and we'd say, you need to move all the big furniture. We, we'll move the small furniture. You move the big furniture. Or no, we'll move the big furniture. I'm backwards. We'll move the big furniture. You move the small furniture. You move anything. We'll walk in and their kids' Legos will be laying on the floor. Their, their dirty socks will be in the corner. They, they, they haven't done anything. What? They're not prepared to receive what we're bringing. Amen? And, and you know, so many times you'd have people, they'd say, oh, no, we don't want to spend that money. So we'll, we'll do all our own take up of the flooring and all that. And they, they take up what you can see, but they don't realize that there's stuff under that car carpet that's got to come up too. There's staples in the floor, there's pieces of pad, there's rotten tack strip, there's all kinds of things. And you know what? People that aren't prepared and don't care, oh, we don't care, just lay over the top of that. <laughs> right? How would that be, you think, with all our guests coming in? We said, well, come on in. Some of the seats over here are a little dirty, but they'll be okay. Just sit in them, right? <laughs> you know, the, 
the, the mints are three years old and stale, but <laughs> eat some of those anyway, right? No. And we don't have any ushers, so just find your own seat. And we don't have time to welcome you because we're too busy, right? We don't have any children's classes. What? You didn't have a plan for your kids? What if we were that unprepared? You know, it, it, it tends that people prepare the big things. You know, and the big things are that we do clean the church. We, we, we pick up the parking lot. We build new things. We add furniture. We, we add lots of things. We go through and make preparations. And, and Mrs. Moore, especially, she'll, she'll look for more excellence. You know, I remember years ago, we were about to do week of increase. And, and we were in a meeting, and it was several months before. And, the, and last year's meeting was amazing. And, and she, said, she said, it could be even more excellent. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? Because I was prepared as I wanted to be at that point. Right. I needed to grow some, didn't I? Yeah, that's right. Because I'm not as prepared as I need to be. And if you're going to receive, you've got to be prepared. Amen. What, what you want to receive from God, you've got to be prepared for. Amen? Amen. Yeah, faith prepares. Brother Moore said it over and over again. Faith prepares. And, and there's so many things that we prepare for as Christians. We'll, we'll say, well, we'll take up the carpet, but we don't need to. Just, just, we'll, we'll take up the big things. You know what? We, we get saved and we say, well, you know, I'm going to quit going out and partying. I'm going to quit going out and partying on Friday nights because now I'm saved. That's the big thing. I'm, I'm going to quit beating my wife right because that's a big thing you shouldn't do that right I'm joking by the way we don't have any of those here if we do today's the day to get free you know we, we tend to, to take up the big things but you know there's things that when in preparing to receive you need to get right Amen? There's things in preparing to, to receive by faith. Open your Bibles to Mark 11. You guys thought I was going to forget all about the Bible, didn't you? There's things in, in our life that are clutter. There, there are things that people don't think about. They think, well, that, that's just that. It's not just that. It's the very thing that makes you unprepared to receive. Mark 11, verse 22 And we know, we know that where this story starts. Actually, you just start in verse 21. That might even work better for me. Peter, everybody knows this. Knows it's not a story, it's an account. Right. This is not, an, it's not a story, it's an account. Right. I've quit calling them Bible stories because they're not stories. You can read a book if you want to hear a story. Right. If you want to know what happened, read the Bible. Right. Amen, because this happened. So it, it ain't a story, it's an account. And so Peter calling to remember, the, the account was Jesus walked by the fig tree, it didn't have no figs on it, and he said, no man eat fruit of you again forever. You know, a lot of people wonder why it died, because he just said, don't eat fruit of me, because God goes to the root. Right? God, God doesn't, he, he doesn't just keep it from growing fruit, he knows how it grows fruit, so he keeps it. Now it, it, there's no chance of it growing fruit. Amen? When he takes something out of your life, he takes it out completely if you let him. Amen? If you let him, he'll heal you to the uttermost. Right? He, he, he won't just take away the symptoms. He'll take away what caused the symptoms. Amen? I, I prayed for, uh, it was last Friday, uh, it was the last two, I don't know, two Friday. Well, Rob was here last Friday, but he preached on healing too. He done good, didn't he? Yeah. But two Friday nights ago, I, I, I'd brought up somebody had had a, a sharp pain in, the, in their left eye. And uh, somebody came up to me, and, and, I say, and I said after that, I said, not only is he going to take the sharp pain away, he's going to fix whatever caused it. Amen. And somebody came up to me that, that Sunday and said, said, I had had a bad tooth, didn't know it, and it was causing a pain in my eye, and I got rid of the tooth, got rid of the pain. Right. And got people said, that's really simple. Yeah, it is. They got prepared. Amen. Amen. But, but, but when we're preparing for the things of God, and, and when Jesus came to that, he said, he said, no man eat fruit of you again forever. And then he walked away. And, and it for sure said that the, the, the disciples heard him say it. 
That's why Peter remembered it. So they walk back, they, walk, they, they go away, and they walk back. When they walk back, the tree's dead. And Peter, he says, he says, Master, back to our verse. Peter, calling to remembrance, said to, him, said to him, Behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Verse 22. You know, and a lot of people right here, this is where you've got to clean it up. Too many people, they say, yeah, my faith's strong. Jesus didn't say, yeah, my faith's strong, did he? He didn't say, yeah, but I'm Jesus. I said, I told it to be cursed. It better be cursed. He didn't say that. He immediately started talking about faith in God. Not just faith, because people, people leave that in God off. And if you leave in God off, then you got faith in your faith. You know how much you can get with faith in your faith? Nothing. You're totally unprepared with faith in your faith. Amen? Faith in your goodness. Now, what if Jesus would have said, yeah, but I've not done anything wrong. That's why I can do this. That's why that tree's cursed, because I've never done anything wrong. I'm good enough. No, nope. nope, that's not what he said. He immediately said and answered them, said, have faith in God. Have faith in love. Right. That's good. God is love. Yeah, that's right. So immediately said, have faith in the one you trust. Have faith in the very one that you've put your trust in. Glory to God. And, and then, he, then, then he goes on to explain it. He said, he says, Verily I say unto you that whosoever, whoso, who is whosoever? He that has faith in God. It's not just anyone. He said have faith in God. And he, he, it doesn't discontinue right there and say, say now, now anyone can do this. No, he's saying if you have faith in God, you're a whosoever. Right? Got any whosoever's in here? Yeah. yeah if you're a saved, you're a whosoever or could be a whosoever. Right? <laughs> But if you have faith in God, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. Now, if you have faith in God, why is he talking about not doubting? Do you think just because you got faith that the devil's going to quit bothering you? Huh? See, this is preparing. Jesus is saying, you need to prepare your heart. You, you want to you receive by this faith, you want to say unto the mountain, be ye removed? So let's, let's get your heart prepared to receive it. What's, what's the number one rule? Well, number one rule to prepare your heart, you've got to say it. If you, if you can't say it, you don't believe it even enough to get that far. Amen. Amen? So if you believe it, if you have faith in God, you'll say unto the mountain. But then he goes on and he says, and shall not doubt in your heart. Doubt in your heart. So many people think, think doubt is, is questioning is saying God can't do that, or, and it is. People say that all the time. But doubt in your heart could go as far as saying, well, the doctor said this. Right? The, the situation looks like this. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if we can get there because we don't have enough money. We, you know, I, I know it says speak to the mountain, but yet we got, we'd have to have money. You, you're doubting. You're doubting. You're, you're questioning how instead of just doing. And when we begin to doubt like that, then, then you know, people say, well, but, but I know in my heart. So he said doubt in your heart. Now, there's a difference between doubt in your heart and doubt in your head. Amen. Right? Because Satan's going to, I don't care if you're in faith or not, Satan's going to try and talk you out of it. Amen? He'll, he'll try. What, what did he do to Abraham? Think about that. Abraham and Romans. The first part of it says, he considered not. What, why was he considering it not? It had to be brought up for him to not consider it. Right? He, he considered not the deadness of his own body or the age of his wife. He didn't consider any of that. Why? Because that was the temptation was to consider it. Right? When you ask somebody and they say, let me take that into consideration, there's a good chance it's not going to happen. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Moore will text me and tell me to do something that, I, that I'm not... Not, I actually, I don't mind doing it, but I'll text her back and say, I'll take that matter into consideration. <laughs> she always says, I'll, I'll take the matter of maybe paying you into consideration. <laughs> or keeping you on into consideration. I'm like, I think I'll go ahead and consider that. Now. I'll, I'll not consider that anymore and I'll do this. <laughs> but he considered not the temptation to doubt. 
And that's what we have to do. There's a temptation that will cause doubt. There's temptation to, to look at the wrong thing. There's a temptation to think you know too much. Right? Brother Moore opens up the Bible and it's Mark 11. Oh, we've heard that one. You were just tempted to fail. Why? Because you heard it. You don't need it again. Right? Oh, or, or, you know, I've heard it a thousand times. I've never gotten it. I'll never will. That's a temptation to fail. Right? You got, you got people that are low. You got people that are high. And they both need to come here. Right? You, 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 to, you got to prepare your heart to receive. If you're going to prepare your heart to receive, you got to be a blank slate. I remember years and years ago, we were doing a children's meeting at the church in Branson. I mean, this was a year, this was even at the old church. And we were doing a meet, children's meeting, and one of the workers came in, and I happened to know she'd been a teacher all her life. She'd been a principal and a superintendent. And she came and sat in the front row and listened like she never heard anything about children in her life. Now that's a person prepared to receive. Amen? When, when you come to these meetings, when you come to receive an answer, to, when you come to receive, the, the minute something happens, don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let him give you a reason to quit. Amen? Because it says if we don't doubt in our heart, but believe in our heart. Believe that those things which we say shall come to pass. We'll have whatsoever we say. What, what's he saying? He said, what's that? You know what that word doubt means? It means waver. Same word as waver. So, so what he's saying is, if you're going to be over here, or you're going to be over here, you're never going to be right here. Right? And, and you're unstable. Why? Because you're looking for every other way except for God's way. Amen? Or, or you want God's way, but you want to do God's way your way. Right? Anybody ever tried to do God's way your way? Yeah, I, I wanted that for a long time. I wanted all the prosperity I could get, but I didn't want the obedience and the willingness. Right? right? I, I wanted to be willing to do what I wanted and obedient to myself to do it. Right? Uh, I, wanted, I wanted everything Dave wanted and nothing God wanted. Except for I knew he wanted me to be prosperous so that I could have everything Dave wanted. Right? That, that's not the prosperity message, by the way. The prosperity message is 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. People want the prosperity, but they don't want the change. Amen? Without the change, no true prosperity. Because just like doubt, he doesn't want it in your heart. Why? Because that's where you receive. That's where faith is. You will pollute the very thing that will get you out of your problem. You will pollute the very thing that, that will take you to the next thing. You'll, you, will, you will put something in there that doesn't belong. And when you put, when you put something in there that doesn't belong, you're, it's no longer faith. What, what is faith with just a little bit of doubt added in? <laughs> Right? I got most faith. I'm 90% in faith. Right? That's like saying this is 90% brownie and 10% garbage. Here. You want that? You want to eat that brownie? No. And brownies are good, so you don't want to mess them up like that. They're good and they're good for you. Huh? Okay. They had, what did they have here, a marathon or whatever when they were a couple weeks ago? And we watched all the people jogging. <laughs> Not one smile. <laughs> Later that day, I went to a restaurant and I watched a person eat a piece of pie. <laughs> they were smiling. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> we better get away from that. We prayed we'd hear God's word, right? Uh, okay. He said, believe, but shall believe, those, believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24, he says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, ask. Amen? 
ask. Got to ask, right? Yes. Anybody, anybody ever get, ever, get, you ever got something you didn't ask for? Usually that's things you don't like. Right? <laughs> when you ask God, you'll get exactly what you need. Amen? Amen? When you don't ask God, you'll get Ishmael. Right? I was going somewhere with that and everybody was looking at me funny. <laughs> right? When you ask God and you don't get tempted to doubt, you'll get what God planned. When, you, when the temptation to doubt comes along, the temptation to, to go another direction or, or to be talked out of what God has for you, then, then, then you will lose or corrupt the faith you had. Amen? And, and when you're praying, if you don't ask, it, then first of all, if you won't ask, you don't, you don't have faith in God. Right? People say, well, he says, says you, he knows what you need before you ask, but he didn't say don't ask. He said he knew what you need before you ask. That meant you were going to ask, but he knew you already had need of it. Right? You got too many people think, oh, we're not going to, that's not, that's not the message. <laughs> that's not the message. Therefore, I say unto you, what, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them. Don't, you, can't, you don't just believe, you believe you receive. And how do you believe you receive and doubt? You can't do that. If you're going to believe you receive, you do not doubt in your heart. But no doubt in your heart, you believe you receive. So now you already have it. Right? People say, well, but I don't have it yet. No, you believe you receive, you already have it. Right. Yeah. Amen? If somebody told you they were bringing something and you believed that you received it, yeah. you wouldn't sit there and question whether it was coming. Right. And if, the, if the God Almighty who created heaven and earth told you that you were healed, He said, you're healed, then you would believe you received that. And you would, you would expect, you, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be wondering if it's going to happen. People say, well, you know, I've been waiting a long time. Doubt. Right? Right? Well, the doctor says it's not getting any better. Doubt. Right? You, we, that's, not, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for, I believe I receive. I believe I receive. I already have this, but it's not in your hand. I already have it. It was promised to me by somebody who can't fail. That's why I said, have faith in, in love. Have faith in God. There's something that can't fail. That's love which is God. Amen. Amen? It won't run out. It won't quit. It, it's, it's yours to receive. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. But he said, he said, therefore, what, so things you, what things so ever you desire. Boy, King James, he could talk, couldn't he? <laughs> when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And then he goes on. Why? Because, because you got to keep your heart prepared. The next verse prepares your heart. He said, and when you're praying, when you stand praying, forgive. The same, it's not two different prayer times. One prayer time. You're going to go ask, and if you're going to ask, you better forgive. Why? Forgive is a temptation to doubt. If you choose not to forgive, then, then you are tempted not to receive. Why? Because you can't forgive. You can't forgive the very love that faith works by is no longer working in you. That's right, that's right, that's right. right? So the next thing you say is if you can't forgive, well, you don't know what they did. Now, Jesus never put that in there. That's right. Maybe I missed part of that. <laughs> Let's look here. Stand, praying, forgive if you have ought against. Oh, any. Any. Probably he meant to put in parentheses except somebody that was really evil. No. No. You know how many people God saved? All. That's, that's how many people he saved. He said he went ahead and saved all. Glory to God. I'm glad I was in all. Right? Aren't you? How many are glad they were all? Yeah, being all is good. Right? That does, that does, has everybody received that? No, but when, when, when they hear the faith to receive it, then they'll grab hold of it and they'll, they'll become one of the all he saved. Amen? But, but he saved all and he forgave just that many. So all you have to do to set your barometer on who you're going to forgive is do it just like God. That's right. Make it real simple. Who did God forgive? Oh. So who do you got to forgive? Oh. oh. And better yet, you, we don't say we got to forgive you. How, much, how, much, how good is that for you? You know, I don't like you, but I got to forgive you. <laughs> you know, come up to Dan and say, 
Dan, I'm not going to be nice to you, but I forgive you. <laughs> Fact is, I'm still going to be mad at you, but I forgive you. You got, you, you got stuff under your carpet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you left a whole bunch of stuff, a lot, lot of clutter. Unforgiveness is clutter that will keep you from receiving. Amen? Why? Because if you can't love, you can't give. And if you can't give, you can't receive. Amen? You, you might be a taker or a stealer or something else, but you'll never be a receiver. The best receivers are great givers. Look at God. He gave the greatest gift ever so that he might receive us. Glory to God. Now, when he got me, I don't know about y'all, but I was not a peach. <laughs> Right? But he went ahead and received me anyway. Cleaned me up and made me a peach. Right? I, I was already pretty, but I wasn't nice. <laughs> Glory to God. But I had a whole bunch of these kind of things, just like you and every person else, every other person in the universe, to get rid of. It, it, he's not, he didn't say, I'll forgive them for you. He said, you forgive them. What's he saying? He said, I want you to use what I put in you to clear a space so I can give you. So when you forgive, you clear out that room and you begin to prepare your heart to receive things that you never would have gotten otherwise. And people say, now is that worth forgiving? Doggone right it is. But you don't get that until you forgive. And you can't forgive to get it. For forgiveness is just like anything else, God. It's a free gift. You give it as a free gift with no strings attached. Right? Yeah, too many Christians in the world, are, are they, they want to do something so God will do something for them. Right? And, and he will do something for you, but you want to do something for him because you love him. Right? And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn this with our grandkids. We've got two grandkids that my daughter adopted this year. And I've purposed... Whenever I give them something, I, per I ask them. I say, you know why I gave that to you? And they say, because we did this. Or I'm like, nope. No, not because you did anything. Because I love you. Amen. Why? Because they already grew up with people giving them stuff because they're victims and giving them stuff because they, you know, they've had, they've had a life before their life now. And uh, they, they've been given things for the wrong reasons. But I want them to know that I'm giving you this because I love you and I expect nothing in return. So that when they tell me they did something good, when they call me and they say, we got a green smiley face or a pink, I don't know, something's good in school. That one, one or the other is good. And when they call and they say, we got one of these, we, we don't say, well, well now we're going to go get you something. Why? Because they already know we love them and we get them something and it doesn't require their works to do it. Works are a temptation for you to be good enough to receive without faith. That's what, that's what it is. It's condemnation is you never being good enough to receive with faith. You got, you got two sides of the road here. That's why he said, go, go to James. James 1. James 1. This is pretty good. I never know how it's going to be till I get here. I know it's going to be good because I'm counting on the Lord to help me a whole bunch. Because you do not want to hear from Dave. Dave's growing, but he was way too opinionated in his day. He's dying now. The old Dave's dying. The new Dave. James 1. Um, look at verse... Uh, Four. Am I right? I didn't get all my verses in here. James 1, 4. Um, no, go up one more then. Go to three. Three. Okay, go to two. When I just started the first verse. Go to two. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. When you fall into diverse temptations, a lot of people say, oh, he's going to tempt me to, to cheat or steal. or They're all looking at big things. One of, one of your biggest diverse temptations is unforgiveness. 
The, 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 the temptation to be hurt. Anybody ever been tempted to be hurt? Oh, yeah. I can't believe they said that. I've been nothing to good but good to them. Let them sit in this chair. Let them do this. Let them drive my truck. Let, I, I did everything for them. I can't believe they did. That's a temptation to be hurt. You know what you'll get? You won't receive anything. Yeah. Why? Because you're off in Waverland. Right? You're over in Waverland. And in Waverland, there's no receiving. In unwaverland, you get all you want. Right? Waverland, bad. Unwaverland, good. Right? Anybody ever watch Dr. Seuss, the star bellied snitch and the plain bellied snitch? Isn't this Dr. Seuss? Right? The one had stars upon thars, the other was plain, and one was better than the other because they had stars. There's none of that. None of that. Right? <laughs> Why did we get there? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. When you fall into diverse temptations, you want to keep your heart clean. Look at the ones you don't look at. How many people did you talk about last week? How many people, how many situations did you judge? Judgment is a temptation to fail. If, if the devil can get you to judge, then the very thing you just judged, you're guilty of. And guess what? Your room's cluttered up and, you, and you're not prepared to receive. We're getting ready to go into a big good meeting next week. Yeah. Glory to God. Right. And, and I want everybody to receive on the highest level that they can receive. That's why that we spend all the time making new stuff and cleaning up and, and making baskets and cooking. And that, the reason why we want people to come in and it be easy. And then, and then to be refreshed and, and things to go well and, and they don't have to think about the natural things. Right. But you know what? Nobody can clean your spiritual closet but you. That's right. That's right. Amen. No, nobody can see what you're, what you're hiding but you. Amen. You may not be hiding it. Maybe you just yell at people out in the open. Well, it's just my nature. I'm just mean to people sometimes. <laughs> well, your nature was supposed to be godly. Right? Well, sometimes you just got to get your way. No. You would never need to get your way. Right? Why do you want your way? God's, God said, Jesus said, he's the way. So I want his way, not my way. So sometimes you just got to scream and yell and kick and stomp your feet until they do what you want. No. No. If that were true, Jesus would have done it all the time. Instead, he just said, oh, you've little faith. <laughs> let me teach you again. Let me, let me try this one more time. And isn't that, wouldn't that be a better way to do to somebody? And said, you'll never get it. You're just stupid. <laughs> we, we, we don't know how you'll ever get it because you, you just don't have the mental capacity. I mean, you're not, you're not going to get anybody to learn anything that way. Right? Wouldn't it be much easier to say, you know what? Sit down here. Just like Jesus, you have little faith. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then, then, then he goes through the parables and, and he says, you have little faith, grab hold of this. Grab hold of this. That's a good God. That's a good father. He wants to give to us on a level that, that we've not seen, but we've got to have a room to receive it. We, he, he's not going to put the good things in there with the unforgiveness. That's why he said, when you stand praying, I want you to forgive. Check and see if you're holding a grudge against somebody. You know, this meeting's coming up and there may be people you hadn't seen since last year. And you say, you know, I didn't like them last year and I don't like them again. <laughs> you know, that's an opportunity to clean your room. Because what God's showing you is you didn't like them last year and you should have. He said, well, they got to make me like him. No, he didn't say. You know, he's told me, and I know I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. He told me to love people. Right. He didn't tell me to make people love me. That's right. So what's our job? Love people. It's not to make them. If you love people, eventually, whether they like it or not, they'll love you back. Right? <laughs> I know my mom, she was, she, she'd come up to me and I was in a grouchy, crabby mood and she'd start hugging me. 
And she would not let go until I hugged her back. And you could not hug her back fake. <laughs> right? He said, oh, mom, yeah, yeah, okay. How about it? No, no. Fake hugs would not get you out of the hug. She would hug you until love got in and came back out. Glory to God. And I'm thankful because I remember it to this day. I remember not liking it. And now I remember liking it. I'm thankful she did it. Why? Because we can, we can love people until they love back. But it's not your job to make them love back. Amen? That's all free. It's not even in the notes right there. You get that all for free. Why? Because it, there is a, a diverse temptation not to love on the level God would have us to. Well, I love them. Yeah, I love them. You know what? If you love somebody when they're missing, you'll be concerned. Right? You know, in a church body, when people go away, you know, we were, we were going through the host list, you know, for the other day. And, you know, I'm only here a few times a year. But they started mentioning names, and I'm like, what about them? They go, oh, they went somewhere else. And it was about three or four. And it, it hurt my heart. Why? Because I didn't know how they were doing. And why? You know, you don't, people say, well, you don't even go here that much. You didn't know. I don't have to know someone to love them. Right? I have to know that God created them. He loved them. So they're love worthy. Right? Did you know you're love worthy? That, that would bring your self-esteem to a way higher level. God made you love worthy. You're worthy to be loved because the greatest and most highest love of all loved you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Say it with me. I'm, I'm love worthy. Love worthy. Glory, to God. Glory to God. You can look in the mirror tomorrow morning and say, you're love worthy. Huh? He's a good God. You know what that'll take away? Diverse temptations. Mm -hmm. Why? That, that clears out space that said you weren't good enough. Right? That clears out that condemnation. Yeah, but I did this. You know, it doesn't matter. That's, what, that's, why, Jesus, that's why Jesus preached repentance. Amen? Amen? Do you know the goodness of God will change you from who you were to who he made you to be? Just like that. Amen? And when, when, we, when we reach out, you know, that's what it says, is the goodness of God leads men to repentance. It's not, it's not, it's not the fear of hell that leads you to repentance. Right? <laughs> People say, well, I sure got better when I thought I was going to hell. No, you got saved when you thought you were going to hell. You got better when you learned how good God was. Amen? Amen. I was never a good person because everything I did had a motive for me. Right? See how God clears out your closet? He'll, he'll take me out of there. You don't want me. Right? How many, how many of you guys got me time? Okay. Yeah, good. <laughs> don't raise your hand. If you do, get rid of your me time. <coughs> right? Call it we time and you and God get together. Right. Amen? Yeah. Selfishness is the highest form of temptation to, to keep you from receiving. Because it, when it's all about you, you know, when it's all about you, yeah, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know why I'm depressed. I don't need to know why, because depression's evil. Right? You know, people want to tell their whole story. Tell it to God, because he'll forgive you. You tell it to the wrong person, they may not. God will forgive you. People don't always. They say they will. They don't always. Right? <laughs> He didn't, tell, he didn't say tell your story to everybody. Right? Glory to God. That's not part either. Let's keep going. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. When, when your faith is tried and, and, you, and you enter into patience, patience is not... I wonder when this is coming. Patience is knowing that it's coming and not being one bit concerned. Right? Not be, if you know that you're healed, you don't chase healing. Amen? 
When, when I finally knew God wanted how to prosper, let me rephrase that, I knew he wanted me to prosper, but when I learned how to prosper, I was never concerned about prosperity. Amen? Because why? I believed I received it. And when I believed I received it, it began happening in my life. Amen? It, it, it's, when, it's when you're chasing it. If you're still chasing it, you, you need to clear out some more space in the closet. Right? Well, you know, like when you say, well, you know, I, I, I've been to healing class. I've read my verses. I've done this. I've done that. What are you saying? I, I've done. I did. I, oh. you're, you're chasing healing on your own. What is that? that you, you followed a temptation. The devil put, a, put a, a bone out there and you grabbed it. Amen? And, th and that's what he's going to do. The temptations, if, it, if they were going to just come at you easy, if it was just going to be something simple, then, then, then we'd already see it. We'd say, oh no, devil, you tried that with me. That's not going to work. Right? But he's going to get something just like he went to Abraham. He said, you're old. Your wife's old. You can't have kids. What's he doing? He's tempting him to quit. He's tempting him not to receive the promise. How did he receive the promise? By faith. He received the promise as he, as he cleared out. He said, now nah, that doesn't, that, that's not a, get that out of here. That doesn't belong here. You, you have to resist the temptation to believe something else. He could have believed, because people say, people say, well, you know, doubt's just doubt. Doubt is believing something else. It's not just not believing what God said. It's believing something else. Something else caused you not to believe what God said. And, and if Abraham would have said, you know what? That's right. I am old. Right? And man, Sarah, she's been, she's, she's, went, what, she's been past the time of life or whatever you call it for years now. There's, there's nothing there. What if he says, yeah, that's, that's right. Then he'd have never had an Isaac. But he considered not the temptation. He considered it not. He said, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, that's not the way it's going to happen here. And, and he didn't even consider it. He gave glory to God, believing what God said over what the devil said. Amen? Amen. Is that in James? Because I thought we were in James. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience, verse 4. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be you perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If, if you'll wait for God's without being tempted to, to walk away, avoid the temptation. Count it joy when it comes. Oh, look, he's trying to talk me out of it. That means it's here. If the devil, if the de you know, the other day I was driving down the road, and I forget the thought that came in. It was so stupid. I'm like... Uh, and, and immediately I thought, only the devil would try to tell you something like that. You have people call the church and say, I don't know if I'm saved. I'm like, who would tell you that? <laughs> only the devil would tell you you're not saved. Because if you weren't saved, you wouldn't, he wouldn't have to tell you that. That's right. right? If, if he says you're not healed, yeah. only the devil would tell you something like that. Yeah. You'll never get this. The minute he says that, you should rejoice because you're just about to have it. Amen? Because that's what he's trying to get you. He's tempting you. He's got no power. So he's trying to use yours. He wants to use your words against you. He wants to use your authority against you. And if he can get you to stay, be sad and depressed and hurt and mad and condemned or unforgive, unforgive, unforgiving, there we go. I knew there was a word in there. I was getting ready to make one up, so it's good to get a found one. If he can get you to be tempted by any of these things, he can keep you from receiving the very thing that's right at your door. Amen? You know, the, the biggest one he wants to get people to do, he wants to tempt them to blame God. It's the original sin. Well, well they ate the fruit. First thing, first thing Adam says, that woman you gave me. Because why? If I can turn this back on God, if I can turn it back on God, then it's his fault and I'm justified. You know, people do that all the time. Well, I prayed and it didn't happen. It must be God. Not God. Not God. 
First of all, you just said, I prayed and nothing happened. You got exactly. Satan used your thoughts and then made, he, he let you say them, and then you got exactly what you believed. You got it, exactly what you believe. And we, we got to watch, we, we got to keep these things out of our closets, out of, out of our house, out of our heart. Because it's with the heart that you receive. You don't receive in your head, you don't receive healing in your body. You receive healing in your heart, and then it works its way through your body. You don't receive prosperity in your wallet. It starts in your heart, and it works its way through your body into your life. You don't receive things from God. You didn't receive salvation in your head. You received it in your heart. Amen? And when you received it in your heart, then the benefits of that salvation began to work in you as you knew them. Amen? And as you, as you, as you allowed God to work in you, then those things work. The, the more love you have, the more good you'll do. Don't know why I said that, but I'm going to say it again. The more love you have, the more good you'll do. Amen? If you find yourself saying, you know what, I just don't feel like I'm doing enough, love more. Mm. Find places. God's giving them to you. We're missing them. We're missing them, guys. Every day, there's an opportunity in front of us to love something or someone, be love in a situation that we don't take. And when we don't take it, we were talked out of it. I was, we were passing by somebody the other day. It was Girl Scouts. Yesterday, we went by and then there was Girl Scouts. And I like Girl Scout cookies, but I like Girl Scout that what they do more. I like when they're sitting on a corner and selling Girl Scout cookies. I just think that's cool. Her dad was with her. I'm like, that's cool. Because, you know, I, that's what I'd do with my daughter. If she wanted to do anything, yeah, we're doing it. Didn't matter. Ramsey said, let's do this. Okay, Dad. Well, let's do it. Let's do it, Rams. We did it. And that's when I see those, so I wanted to stop, I said, I said, oh, we should stop and get some cookies. And we didn't. I missed an opportunity to love somebody. Not, not, not this big, I'm not me, I'm not condemned. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on with this message now. <laughs> Lord, clear out my cookie closet. What, what I'm saying is there's little opportunities that we don't think are a big deal right. and you don't know till you do them. Right. I, I don't know how big a deal or not big a deal. I may have just bought three boxes of cookies and ate them all last night. <laughs> it might not have been a big deal. But God might have stood in front of them. God said, oh, pray for them for this. Yeah. You know, he, he, he's not saying grab hold of their hand and pray for them. He's saying when you walk away from here, pray for them. Yeah. He, tells, he tells people that all the time. Yes. Amen? Amen. We recently sold something big to somebody, and I didn't even know the person. And he said, he said, when you meet him, tell him that his kindness is the key to his business. Right. And I don't even know if he knows God. Right. But God, you know, I was praying. And God when, said, when you meet him, tell him that his kindness is the key to his business. And that's all he told me to say. And so when I met him, that's what I told him. Yeah. Yeah. That's up to his to, him to receive it. Right, I'm just a giver. God gave to everybody. Everybody ain't received yet. Everybody ain't received. Back, back, to, back to James. Needless to say, if you see Girl Scouts, buy some cookies. And if you don't like them, give them away. There's other people that will smile while they eat them. Verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. You know, this is, this is a bigger verse than people that say, well, yeah, I need to ask God. No, you need to ask of God. You're asking love. How do you know you're asking love? Because it says right after, it says, he gives to all men liberally. You didn't just ask God for something. You asked the love, you asked the very presence of love to give you wisdom. Glory to God. Now, you get love's wisdom, you're going to answer right. Amen? He said, he said if, if you lack wisdom, don't just go get wisdom. You know, lots of people, they lack wisdom, they go to school. You know what? You, you ain't going to get no wisdom in school. I'm just, I'm just going to say it like that. I went to school. <laughs> Wasn't the teacher's fault, but I didn't get any wisdom. 
didn't go to college, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but if you lack wisdom, in fact, in this very book, he talks about two kinds of wisdom. There, there's the one you ask for from God, and there's earthly devilish wisdom. There's two kinds of wisdom, and if you don't get this one, you'll get the other one. Amen? And we want this one. He says, who gives to all men liberally and abrades not. He, do, he, doesn't, he doesn't find any fault. People say, oh, I can't get it. I don't deserve wisdom. I've been doing stupid things. I don't deserve wisdom. That's exactly why you need wisdom. Exactly. Anybody ever done something stupid? Oh, yeah. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Yeah. Right? You know, you know that this, you could pray this 90% of the time and be okay. I don't know what to do here. Ask for wisdom. Wonder what I should do over there. Ask for wisdom. Wonder which direction I should go. Ask for wisdom. Wonder if I should start a ministry. Ask for wisdom. When, when couldn't you ask this? And expect love's answer. Don't just expect an answer. Expect love's answer. Because love is getting ready to give you wisdom. Because if it's love, it might not sound like wisdom. Because if it's love, he'll say, yeah, I want you to give away all you have and come follow me. Right? And then you can either look, go away sad, or you can go give away all you have and follow him. Glory to God. But that was love's wisdom. That was the very wisdom of God that was trying to get that boy to a higher place. He thought he had a high place. He needed to come down. He needed to rejoice because he was made low. Right? He said God gives to all men. Who, what, how many men does he give to? Anyone who asks. He, he doesn't even separate this out into Christians. Did you know if somebody that does not know God called on the name of the Lord and said, Lord, I need help. I need wisdom. I need help. He'd give it to them. Oh, yeah. That's right. yeah. Why? He's just good. He can't not. He couldn't even stop. He's all oh, they're asking. They're asking for it now. <laughs> Boom. Now what they do with that's up to them. Glory to God. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith nothing doubting, nothing wavering. In other words, clean your closet out. Don't have any reason for the devil to say, well, you can't do that. Well, what if the guy at the pool, I mean, obviously we see later he did sin. But what if he, when Jesus came up to him and said, would you, made be, would you be made whole? He said, I'm a sinner. He'd still be laying at the pool. But instead, he stood up. And then Jesus came back to him and said, don't do this again or something worse could happen. Healing came first. The goodness of God leads men to repentance. How, what better way? Heal them. You'll get, you'll get them turned around real quick. Amen? How many of you got saved and the next day were perfect? Right? Right? No, because you had stuff to learn. You had places to grow. You had, you had things in you still to get rid of and things not in you that you needed and still do today. Amen? And as we get those and as we gather those, then, then we'll not waver, we'll not doubt. But we have to ask in faith. When you ask God for something, don't just ask and then wonder if it's going to come. Amen? Ask in faith. It says, let him ask in faith for he that... He that Wavereth is like the sea of the is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. I got so many writings on my notes that I can't see my notes. Verse six, verse seven. I'm sorry. Let not that man think he shall receive anything. He didn't say, "Let not that man think I won't give him anything." He said, let not that man think he'll receive anything. Why? Because he's not in a position to receive. Right? If the bus stops here and you're over there or over there, guess what you're not getting on? You're not going to receive a ride. You're going to receive a walk. Right? And you probably won't be smiling. I don't, I'm just, I, I don't know about that. Maybe you'll, you could walk and smile, but I don't know about jog and smile. I had somebody purposely jog by me one time smiling just to try to disprove my theory. <laughs> I still didn't believe her. 
But, but what, he, what is he saying? He's saying you got so many things blocking you. You're, you're, waving, you're waver, wavering over here. You're wavering over there. You're in condemnation. You, you're mad at this person. You, you're, you quit going to church because you were upset with these people. You didn't like the way this happened. You yelled at two drivers getting here. You, you know, there's a thousand things that, you know, and, and you're wavering. So what, what are you asking? I don't know, because you can't receive it. Right? It's not that God can't give it. God gave. Right? You could say God gave. He's, he's, he's gave. He already gave all that he's going to give. Us receiving it is the next step. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. Let not that man think he'll receive anything. Keep on going on that. A double-minded mind, man is unstable in all his ways. Very next verse. Let the brother of low degree... People look at this and, they, you know, we break things into chapters and verse so much that we kind of pull these verses away from let him ask in faith. If, you don't, if, you're, if you're in condemnation, let the brother of low degree... You know, a lot of people say he's poor. He's poor a lot of ways. He don't feel good about himself. He, he's condemned. He hadn't done the right things. He, he's in low degree. And he's saying let that brother be it, rejoice in that he's being exalted. Why? Because he's got to come out of that condemnation to get out of Waverland. He's got to come out of, I'm never going to be good enough to come out of Waverland. Amen? If he doesn't come out of, I'm in condemnation and I can't do it and I've never been good enough, I'll never have the, the never, he's a never land. Truly. Never, never land. That's right, Dan. But, but let, him, let him rejoice. Let him rejoice in that he's exalted. What's he saying? Let him rejoice that, that he's not in a place I can't give to him. Let, him. let him come up. Let me exalt him so that he'll receive. And then he goes to the very next verse and he says, but the rich, what's he saying? The, the rich brother. He already talked about the poor brother. He said the rich brother, the one that knows so much, has done so many good things, comes to church, sits on the front row, gives every time the plate's passed. He is one good dude. Man, he's good. He knows the word. You ask him a question, and he'll, he'll give you that pat answer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right? He's got him. He's got him down, Pat. And he, he needs to be made low. He, he, he needs to come down to, from, from his high-mindedness so that he can receive. Why? It's all temptations. You're tempted to be not good enough. You're tempted to be too good. You're tempted not to receive. And what God's saying is if you'll ask in faith, get out of the wavering, get out of the condemnation, get out of I'm too good, get out of I'm never going to be good, I need to earn it, I would need to do this. You'll get out of that, you can have it. Because why? Nothing's under your carpet. You're not hiding unforgiveness in your heart. You're not, you're not putting things in your heart. That's why it says in Proverbs, guard your heart. Why? Because you don't want stuff in there that keeps you from receiving or giving. Out of it flow the very issues of life. And, and when we allow that love and that peace and that joy and, the, those, and every good thing that God puts in you to come out of us, then, then, then we not only have received, but now we have that very thing to give. Amen? Amen. And, but, but it starts with us receiving. Why do you think it's so important for the devil to keep us from receiving? Because if you receive your healing, you'll go tell somebody. Right? If you just have peace all the time, people will catch hold of that. Next thing you know, we'll have a peace epidemic. Right? We'll have people happy for no reason at all. They'll just be walking down the street smiling. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is strong. And it's your strength. And you'll just have it. And, you, and people say, what are you smiling about? I'm like, whew, I'm it. I mean, God has made me worthy. I, I am going to heaven. I'm healed on the way there. I'm prosperous every day of my life. What do I have to be sad about? And the devil will say, oh, you forgot about this, this, and this. Say, no, devil, I'm not considering the deadness of my body. Glory to God. He's a good God. 
He wants us to be prepared. He wants our heart cleared out and clean. That's, what, that's why David, I'm convinced David wrote, or the psalmist, he said, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Renew means he had a right spirit before. Right? Doesn't, doesn't mean he had to get a right spirit. He had one, so he knew what it was. Sometimes we lose that in the day-to-day -day struggle. In just, you know, that's the new word. It's a struggle. Kids today, how's it going? It's a struggle. <laughs> like, you know what? The devil's pretty smart. If he can get a whole generation saying that, well, what is it? The struggle's real. <laughs> Not only is it a struggle, it's real. Huh? Man, he, you thought our stuff was, he's bad. You know, that's what we said. He's bad. It's gotten, and now they're sick and struggling and my goodness. Those are all temptations. And if you'll keep saying them, you'll have exactly what you say. Because that doubt in your heart is what you truly believe. Right? You're not good enough. You're not worthy. The struggles are Israel. And sickness is out there and it can just get you at any moment. Right? And you know what? There's lots of reasons not to believe if you want to take them. But you got one good reason to believe. God said so. God made you worthy. God, God raised you up. If you were too low, he, put, he exalted you. If you're too high, he'll bring you down. God ever brought you down to earth before? Man, I remember I was believing for something, and man, I thought I was right on it. And God said, you doing this yourself? I said, no, sir. He said, you're acting like you are. <laughs> Man, I went from here to here. But you know what I didn't do? Oh, I'll never get it done. I was higher than God. No, I didn't cry. I didn't whine. I came down and said, sorry, God, I want it. <laughs> He'll talk to you if you listen. Somebody was asking me why they couldn't hear him. Day. I said, you just weren't listening. Right? If you say hi to God, he'll say hi back. Right? If you, that's your biggest test you can ever have people say, I just can't hear from God. Say hi to him. Yeah. Just, just really, seriously, just say, hi, God. And he'll say, hi. Because yeah. people make it real difficult. They're like, God, I need this, and this is so big, and, and over here it's that, and the spiritual demons and the world to come, and mmm, mmm, and I can't hear, and I need to, I need to get down, and, and, and days, and deliverance, and oh, Lord. Say hi. <laughs> and then he'll say, now what do you want to talk about? Right. And, and then you start telling him the story. I say, no, I know all that. What do you want? <laughs> right? It's like, like when the blind guys came up to him, he said, what can I do for you? They didn't say, well, I've been blind, you know, and was born. There was a thing, and the doctor said this. <laughs> and... Because of that, this eye here does this, and this one will go this way. And literally, the doctors say, I'll never see. Jesus did not want to hear that. He said, what can I do for you? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. That's all good. It has nothing to do with the message. But God's good. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We can receive these things. Don't make it difficult. Don't, don't say, I can't forgive. Don't say, I'm too low. Don't say, I'm too high. Don't, don't be depressed. People say, I've just been depressed and I can't get out of it. Don't say that. Right. Right. Say, I don't have to be depressed any day of my life. Amen. I don't have to be sad. I don't have to be mad. I get to be glad. Yes. Right. He has made me glad. Thank you, Lord. And, and as we do that, we'll, we'll, be, we'll prepare ourselves to receive bigger and greater things. You'll prepare your heart and God will begin to put things in you. And you'll say, well, is he going to give me this? He's going to give you a mission. He's going to give you the greatest thing he ever gave you. He's going to put people in front of you that need him. He's going to put people around you that never have seen peace or experienced it. He's going to put people behind you that, that were going the wrong way. But now they can follow you. Why? Because you're going the right way. 
because you're following him. Amen? And as we clear those spaces, as we refuse to, to be unforgiving, as we refuse to, to stay in condemnation and, and, and never be worthy or be too worthy, or, as we begin to clear out these places, I don't know what's bothering you. I don't know what the devil tempts you with because he tempts you with what can tempt you. Right? But you know what it is. And you can say, stop that. You don't think Abraham went to his, to his closet for three days. said, he's trying to tell me that I'm too old. And look at her, old. How am I ever going to have a kid? I'm supposed, I'm, I'm supposed to have the Isaac, the seed of the whole world. I, and uh, look at me. But he did not take that temptation. Thank you, Lord. And that's why we're standing here today talking about faith. Yes. Glory to Stand to your feet. I don't even know what else to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just, just take a minute. Thank Him. Say, say this with me. Lord, show me if there be any wicked way in me anything in me that needs to be cleaned cleared out taken away Lord clear me out I by faith receive from you all the goodness all the love all the mercy I'll not judge I'll not quit I'm never depressed I've got the joy of the Lord and I walk in victory every day of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, for cleaning me up, making me free and letting me do your goodness in the earth. Thank you, Lord. You got a song? Thank you, Lord. Go. He gives me victory. Everywhere I go, His Spirit is on me. Now this isn't just the end song because if you were in Waverland you're not headed towards victory right you're in Waverland you got to get out get in Victoryville want to live in Victoryville that's where we're headed and we're not leaving Victoryville we're gonna stay there we're gonna live there we're gonna abide there we're gonna receive from Victoryville everything he wants us to have we're not we're not gonna leave there and say oh, I got everything I need you, you'll never have more than God wants you to have because He wants you to have more. You get to a certain level and you say, I got, I got it all I need. He'll say, no, you need this. He said, get, let, let me give you this and you'll see what it can do over here. Let me, let me put this in you and, and that gift will be a blessing over here. And, and you don't want to forget those gifts. Everything He gives us. Everywhere I go. Sing it loud. Sing it again loud. Everywhere Where I, I go, go, He gives me victory. Everywhere, Everywhere I, I go, go, His Spirit, His spirit is, is on me. God is my God. There's no greater one than He. Everywhere I go, He gives me victory. Do it again. swing around another time because it might just be somebody was in here. Everywhere I go I might have victory Everywhere I go I wished he would shut up 
He's gone all too long And I'm so tired of hearing he So we're going to do it again We're going to sing about victory We're going to sing about God being our God Everywhere we go Not just everywhere we go we're, we, He gives us victory and if He gives it to us, then you got it to give back. You can give it out. Glory to God. Say, I got too much victory. Good. That's, he gives it to us. Overflows. Pours out on other people. They'll say, ooh, I got some goodness on me. I'm like, yeah, you did. Let it slip on up your leg all the way to your heart. Let it cover your head. You be so covered in goodness, you won't know what to do. Glory to God. So everybody in here, even the shy people, we're going to sing it again. We're going to sing it loud. Here. If I can sing it loud, anybody can sing it loud. Let me get a mic that I can sing loud in. They get mad at me for singing loud in this one. We're going to sing it loud. We're going to sing it strong. We're going to confess it. We're going to walk in it. We're going to live in it. We're going to breathe it. We're going to eat it. We're going to be it. Glory to God. Are you all ready? Here we go. Thank you. Glory to God, everywhere I go, He gives me victory, everywhere I go, His Spirit is on me, sing it loud, God is my God, there's no greater one than me, everywhere I go, He gives me victory. down the street you get a stupid thought in your head say, oh caught you devil stupid thought means I'm getting ready to do something good for God yeah I'm not taking that thought no no I, I'm not considering you show me what I get to do now God show me show me the victory I get to see now glory then, 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 the, then we come down oh scratchy throat <clears throat> victory Vic that's the devil trying to talk you into a sickness that's a temptation to be sick. Symptoms are a temptation to say, I'm sick. Don't say you're sick. It doesn't say when you don't feel good, say you're sick. It says, let the weak say, I am strong. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing it again. Hallelujah. Was that good or what? It's good. Not what. But hallelujah. The devil's a liar. He's a loser. Like Brother Dave said, when he tells you you're not going to make it, rejoice. Start getting excited. Start dancing. Because you are. There is there's no truth in him. Hallelujah. Well, if you're here watching by the internet, say that affirm or reaffirm our faith father god i believe in you i believe in your son jesus i believe he died on the cross and rose again on the third day father as you help me i will serve you all the days of my life and i thank you father for the precious your precious son jesus and your Holy Spirit, which guides me and directs me through all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're about to be dismissed. Get excited, get prepared, and get your faith on for tomorrow night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to build, but have your expectors on.
Bring your catcher's mitt. God's going to be throwing us all kinds of new things, good things, because that's all he has is good. Hallelujah. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. We're dismissed. As they say. Oh, you do spirit, Tommy.